All right, I wanted to go over yesterday real quick because I think I made a mistake in the moment um, that the move that we wanted was obviously we were opening up above here yesterday above the buy side. So I was looking for this move going down with a fair value gap to enter and exit at 90 right above sell side. I don't want to target it. I don't want to put my take profits below like sell side or above buy side because sometimes this happens and we just get close and then we, we bounce off of that. And so these two dashed lines are between 930 and 10 because I wait till 10 to tra take a trade. So when I saw this happen, I was thinking the move happened. There's nothing for me. Just skip the morning session because then I'm going to be chasing that move, but it already happened. I was thinking that because in my back testing, I would skip days, but I went back and looked at my notes and I would only do that when liquidity was taken out from both sides. So this move happened and I thought that that invalidated or just like made it so there was no trade for me. However, liquidity was only taken out above the buy side. We never took out liquidity beneath the sell side. So it was my mistake. I should have waited. We would have had to wait for this to come back up, but you'll notice we have a bearish fair value gap right here. So we could have entered on any of these retests and I'll scroll over so we can see what happened, but let's just put a, uh, a short in here and see our stop would have had to been up here above this swing, but so like a 40 point stop, but I would have been targeting 90. That would have been scary because we had that move already. So it's like, are we really going to go back down there? But that risk to reward would have been a 1.88. So there's that one. I'm going to stretch it out because we would have had to just withstand all of this. But as you'll notice, I'm pointing like you guys can see my finger pointing on the screen. Um, we never went up and we wouldn't have gotten stopped out. So that's one entry. The second, there's another entry over here. Fair value gap. Fair value gap. Retest. So another sh option right here. This stop would have been up here. Another 40 pointer, but regardless. And targeting down here. This one would have only been a one to one basically, but it worked. And we do eventually go attack the sell side. And both of these would have worked and both of these, I think these are the trades obviously that I should have taken and would have taken on my back testing in the moment yesterday. I was like, we just had a weekend. I forgot and I saw the move and I'm like, oh, the move happened. That means there's nothing for me, but that doesn't matter. There's nothing for me. If we don't get a setup, the uh, fair value gap above buy side or below sell side, or there's no trade for me if liquidity is taken above and below before 10 a.m. So had the sell side been, had this been like up here like that, then buy side's taken out, we go down, take this out, and then come up, then I would skip the day. Because by 10 a.m., buy side and sell side were taken out. Sell side was not taken out by 10. We just had this fake move down and rip back up and could have gotten in could have even gotten in on this fair value gap on this one so on that candle putting a stop up here a 33 point stop that probably would have been ideal targeting 90 would have had to wait till like basically noon but we could have done it we've been holding these trades like it's nobody's business um yeah so it is what it is uh i learned i should have known this but i just didn't have that specific like nuance written down in my notes i had only been writing down ignore if liquidity is already taken out before 10 but liquidity wasn't taken out on both sides so the, the the trade was still at play we still could have waited for something but i didn't 
we didn't lose money on the trade for making a mistake. Yes, we had a red day, but I was going to take that afternoon trade anyways. We missed out on some profits in the morning because of a mistake. That's not a big deal. Um, and it's nice seeing like this is strategy still working. I thought I was ready or I thought I was able to take these trades perfectly like back testing, but obviously I'm still making a couple little mistakes. Again, not that big of a deal. So, um, and then for the afternoon, you saw uh, we took, where was it? I think on this little tiny bear value gap and then ended up getting stopped out. I did come back at the end of the day. Video was already posted. I took one of these shorts. Um, I think this one right here. I was only risking like 10 points, 12 points or whatever. I think I think it was a 10 point, but I r recognized I'm only taking a morning and an afternoon trade. I, I took my afternoon trade. Why am I even in this? I got out for plus eight points. It, I'm ashamed to say I made a mistake. I'm tr I'm, I've been doing very well not taking impulsive trades. Yesterday just got to me because at that point, I think I looked back and realized, damn, I missed. I shouldn't have skipped the morning. I should have just kept waiting. And then I took a loss in the afternoon. It's kind of upset. And then I saw a short and it was technically a setup. Technically, this um, trade could have still played out. Um, but I went against some of my rules and just ended up exiting exiting for plus eight points. So it is what it is. Uh, keeping keeping those emotions under control is important though. And I think I was able to do that, which is why I did not start revenge trading or tilting or blowing anything up. Made a little mistake, uh, ended green with that trade, and yeah, moving on. So that leaves us with today. Um, I've got the dash lines between 2 and 5 a.m. Is that right? Yeah, so the London session is between 2 and 5 a.m. Um, Eastern. I've got the high marked out. I've got the low marked out. Drag that out. And then I added some additional lines over here. So we got the buy side above here. This sell side we have taken out while I was talking. So come 10 a.m., we would, if we are still down here, we will start looking for um, bullish uh, fair value gaps. And it could be anywhere between like this halfway point and down, as long as we can get a decent amount of points up to towards the buy side, we will take that, but it has to happen after 10. That's just, that's just what I'm doing. Um, and the only way we would exit is if we hit, uh, I'll probably target like 30 somewhere up in here within like 10 points of this. Yeah. So maybe like 30, maybe right before that high, if we get into something, uh, but yeah, the only way we will exit is hitting our profit at 30, whatever our stop is at, or the, we chop into the lunch session at noon. I will just manually kill it wherever we are at noon. And that's, that's my, that's my plan. Um, yeah, so we'll come back in like 15 minutes. It's 9.46 and see what we can find at 10. Um, I'm trading on Apex. I have a funded account that we are trying to get out of the red and a, uh, a small evaluation account that we're copy trading just one contract over there. It's just a 25K account. And Apex is, they were doing a 90% off, but now they're just doing an 80% off for the rest of the month. That's still crazy good money and it only takes seven days to pass an account assuming you can hit the profit goal without breaking any rules but 80 percent off is a pretty good deal i think that's what i have on both of these accounts but there's a link in the description and then the coupon is save 80 so that's down there as well and that would be cool if you click that because that would help us out um but yeah i'll see you guys on the first trade hopefully you guys are doing good while i'm talking and
Oh, let's see if we get a uh, gap here, and then we need it to come back in. There we go. Now we need it to come back. Hopefully not create another one. So that's a freaking huge stop, but we got to take what's given to us. I mean, there are plenty of times where we just trade up and then back down into a gap and then rip off of that. It would be ideal if this candle came back down. So there's no question. We could have got in there, but that's a really big, that's a really big stop. 43, I, in testing, I have had some like that, but I don't really want to. Let's see if we can get a better entry. Ideally in this fair value gap. Could have always entered there with like a contract and then if we come down here two more that's that doesn't qualify as like adding to a loser because both are valid setups at least in my opinion but we'll just give it some time and see if we kind of make our way down if we do i mean it makes sense that people would then think oh that was a false push that's what we're doing on this channel is missing setups that we call out probably should have marketed in back here but uh it technically wasn't a uh, technically was an entry but we do have a fair value gap here and we can be targeting not quite as many points as uh um Not quite as many points as if we got in down here, but I think at this point we could go run the high, so we could try to hold off or up in like the 50s maybe. We'll just see. So ideally, I would have wanted a fair value gap lower, but I'm just taking what it gives me. It's a little worrisome that this came up directly into the this area I think I missed my chance by uh, not taking this but again it we didn't test I mean it came very close so like why am I it's only like a point away should have just taken it I didn't get into that because of a Tick. <clears throat> Probably should have just marketed when it came close. At that point, I was already taking on all of this risk. So what's a what's a tick? What's a couple points? But see if we can't squeeze a little more out of this. We came down, took out all this sell side. We have some equal highs. All this. There should be buy stops up there. And it's equal with the London session. Let's hope. My goal with these trades, like I've said, is to take trades exactly like what I would do in back testing. And I'm with this move, I'm not sh I'm not sure if I would have taken that or not. Obviously I should have, but do I change my entries uh, instead of requiring it to touch that just if it gets within a couple points just go ahead and mark it in after today yes that's what i would like to do and there have been some trades i have taken where i did i did do that so i need to just make the decision to do that every time or not but uh that shouldn't change my the outcome of all these trades by getting in a little early on all of them because on the losers 
on the losers, it's going to add a couple, like one or two points to all my losers. And then all my winners, it's going to take away a couple points. So I just have to figure, decide if that's what I want to do or not. Maybe when there's like multiple fair value gaps and do that because it could get away from us. But if it was just one, wait for the retest. Well, we missed our opportunity. Again, I don't know if it's a missed opportunity because I didn't, uh, we didn't get the retest. And you guys know me. I was targeting 230. I probably would still be. There's a potential I would still be holding on to this. I don't. I just don't know how I'm going to put this down. I guess this, is, this was my only opportunity. There was a fair value gap here that I did not take because I don't know where I would I don't know where the stop would have been there's no swings no way in hell would have put it down here so I think that's a I, sh I should have skipped that came up to the midpoint of that wick right there something ICT talks about damn well, we come back this afternoon. Try again. I think I'm gonna just start. If they, if there are two fair value gaps like this, like we had one, two. So at this point, you know we're way up here. That candle closes, and we start coming down. I just mark it when we get close to that one. But we'll come back after lunch and see how this plays out because. I've been pretty stubborn on uh, holding till my targets. So, regardless, even if we, even if this, you know, goes around, if it never hits a stop, we'll see what kind of points we would have made at lunch or at noon. We would have killed it off of this. Just, I'm more just curious because, uh, say, mark it in about 50, targeting uh, 230, and then we'll see what that looks like at noon but we're gonna wait until one and see what the range is there see what happens there and then see if we can catch a trade and hopefully something like this doesn't happen hopefully it's a little cleaner and a clear entry and a clear exit Man, what a shame though. What, what did that get up to? 70 points. We'll get it. Alright, I'll be back. You guys heard me say what my plan was for this morning. You heard me say what my exit was. And if we don't hit the exit, we hold until noon. We freaking hit 2.30 at noon. And I didn't take the fair value gaps down here. You want to know why? Because I'm taking my rules way too far when I've told myself I can bend them a little bit. This fair value gap. I was wanting it to either test this one or test this one down here. But when you have two, you have to just get in on the first one. This candle, look at how close we were. We were two ticks away. I'm trading, I'm trading three micros. So I didn't get into this one because it was an extra $3 of risk. For an 80 point move. I didn't want to risk an extra three dollars.
bought beneath this swing. So yeah, 40 something points seems like a lot of risk, but the move I was targeting was 80 points, <clears throat> almost a one to two risk to reward and we hit it and it worked. But when we were back here, telling myself my rules say to wait till the fair value gap is tested and then you can get in. But I need to start just marketing in when we're close, especially on a move like this where we have some strong candles making fair value, fair value gaps. So now I know that's something that like, I'll see that when I back test, but I'm not really comprehending. It's so much different when you're trading live, as you all know. <clears throat> so I don't know that it's cool that I keep picking out these moves. Yeah, that's great. Like <laughs> I'm, I picked out the move from down here that was going up here, but I'm just not. I'm struggling on taking those trades um, when they're happening. It, it's it's a different story, and it's not hard. It's just I start second guessing myself, or I'm saying, no, it's technically not quite it. When I should have just marketed it in. Because here's the thing. Say we were coming. This candle at one point was red. It's coming down. It's down here. It's so. It's just a handful of points away from our entry. Just mark it in and risk an extra couple points because if it does come down here, we're going to get in anyways. So even if we mark it in and it's a red trade, we would have gotten in regardless. We're only risking an extra couple points. In this case, if we were to mark it in down there, I couldn't have timed it perfectly. So let's say like 50. We got in at 50. That's only two points that we were risking extra on an 80 point move. So I need to, I, I think that's what some of you guys were getting at yesterday in the comments with the rules, like have the rules as guidelines, but I need to obey price action. Uh, <laughs> came down beneath the sell side, taking out liquidity and this candle with this, um, huge wick indicates we're wanting to start reversing. So with that, plus the fair value gaps, plus having two fair value gaps, plus we got close enough, should have just marketed it in. But take that as a another learning experience. I'm not too like, yeah, this trade I got into was a little bit of a FOMO because I'm like, damn, I just missed out on all this. But technically it still was a setup. Had none of this happened, had we not had a um, fair value gap down here, I would have taken this regardless. So it's not that big of a deal. So it's almost one. I doubt we're going to have a different high and low from here. So let's go ahead and mark out our lunch highs and lows so here's the lunch the lunch session times 12 p.m eastern and 1 p.m eastern we got a low right here and the highs up here we have to manually kill it if we get into a trade at four because that's my um it's just one of my rules and now after one we wait for the market to take out one of these this high or this low if we take out once we once we start trading above this even a little bit then we can start looking for bearish fair value gaps and if we trade below here we can start looking for bullish fair value gaps and targeting the opposite side. So now it's just going to be a matter of waiting again.
Well, this was a valid setup. As I say, sometimes they don't work. The one from this morning did work. I didn't take it. So once we start taking the ones that work, the ones that don't work don't really matter. It's only 220. Kind of want to see. This could trade down a little deeper and then maybe we get another setup. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know if I want to. I'm really frustrated about this, that I didn't take this over two ticks. <clears throat> I'll probably sit here and just watch it and see if anything happens, but if I end the video here, then that means I didn't find anything, but I don't plan on talking over this next little bit. If I see it, I'll take it. So that will be in here. And if there, if this is the end, farewell. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. As of right now. Oh my God. This is sucking. This is sucking. Why couldn't we have taken that trade this morning? All right, I was editing the video. Still frustrated about this move that we missed, but I opened my charts, took another trade. I'm only supposed to be doing two at a day, two at a time, but we really, you can see we really, uh, there's too much going on on this chart, but we really dug into the lunch sell side down here. We have some fair value gaps. I entered down there. As one was forming, I didn't really wait for the confirmation and retest. I think because of this garbage back here. Um, but we will be targeting close to the buy side. We don't have to break the highs, but it'd be nice to get up at least to like 40. Um, possibly after we take out this high. There's so much going on. I need to take some of this stuff off. This red line is the as uh, 4 p.m. It's the end of the day. So we need to kill it by the time we get there. I'm freaking leaving this until we hit something. Hit the end of the day. Hit our profit or hit our stop. Thinking about maybe making 30 our stop though, or our target. So I know I switched off of the two minute, or off of the one minute and into the two minute, but the one minute has better entries for these freaking fair value gaps. This one, two minute we didn't really retest, but the one minute we did. And then back here this morning, Fair value gap clearly dug into it. Maybe I need to just, I need to just probably use both of them. Fine, I'll just take that. Who knows what the hell's gonna happen here in the last like 30 minutes. Wasn't really technically any setup, I admit. I was kind of pissed. But it was based off of the idea of lunch, the lunch session getting a uh, sell side liquidity getting taken out 
took it out back here however came down one more time and this time it it dug beneath this uh cell side as as well so i'm like you know what f it it's not gonna it, if it's not gonna come back down here that's gonna be the next stop before it goes higher and we got we got some points out of that still right on the day There's that stupid first trade that was missed, but I don't know. Thinking about trying to figure out just maybe maybe allowing myself to trade based on just ICT's other concepts um, without this very strict two two trades a day. If I miss one or mess something up, maybe give myself a couple other opportunities. Keeping decent risk management, um, but just with the principles of liquidity being taken out. So came down, took out this low, took out this low. So now we're gonna move up and start taking out some other high, some some highs, and that's what we did. We didn't quite get that one. I really think we may go up, but. I, I don't know. The last 30 minutes is usually crazy. <sighs> so we're just ending it there. How'd you guys do? Did you guys follow rules? Um, that's the main thing. You guys follow, if you followed your rules, it's a good day. I did not follow my rules. So it's a bad day. Plus it's a red day. So it's extra bad. But is what it is what it is. Old me months and months ago would have probably tilted and revenge traded and like blown this account or something. But we got to figure something out. We got to, we, we've got to just don't think and just get into trades when we see them playing out. Now, yesterday and today we had the liquidity runs on the London session. So like in my mind, what are the chances that it's going to happen tomorrow? So we're already on day two this week of red trades. So I'm already like putting it in my head that tomorrow is going to be a red day, which is not good thinking. I shouldn't think like that. I just need to take the trades that present themselves and let the market decide the rest. But I uh, need this break until tomorrow morning. So going to go relax. You guys have a good one.